Who doesn't like a healthy dose of design inspiration when it comes to working on your next project? We all need those little sort of prompts that help us get those creative juices flowing or just give us some cool ideas. Well, I've got two examples today that I think are worth checking out and I would recommend you do just that. Have a look at them, see what you think and let me know in the comment section what you thought of them. While you're in that comment section though, why not also let me know any kind of design inspiration sites that you use on a regular basis so I can check those out as well. Anyway, with that out of the way, let's move on to the first of the two that I want to cover in today's video. First on the checklist is UIverse. This, as its name suggests, has a massive collection of UI elements or user interface elements. Things like buttons, checkboxes, and all those kinds of cool things. But the thing that I like about this is it's not just all about that design inspiration. You can grab the code, both the HTML and the CSS. And if you're a Tailwind user, you can use a lot of the options inside here as well. Let's take a quick look at how this all works, some of the options you've got available, and why you may want to check it out for yourself. So this is the site, and as you can see, if we come to elements, things are broken down into nice, simple, logical groupings. So for example, you may want to take a look at cards. Cards are something we use in lots of different designs. Things like you know, e-commerce, whether you've got a listing website, those kinds of things. We're always looking for inspiration for card designs. So let's open that up. There's over 1,100 different options here that we can check out. Some are just static, some are animated, but they're all a great set of inspirational options. So for example, you can see we've got this first one, which is just a static design. This one then gives us some animated options. You get the idea how this all works. And you can see there's a lot of different options here. Some animated, like I say, some are just static. But there's a lot of things to choose from to get your sort of creative juices flowing. And whether you use these as they are, or you simply just use them to, for some inspiration to kind of give you some ideas on how you could combine different elements, different colors, drop shadows, animations, those kinds of things. Well, there's a lot here to choose from. And then when you actually find something you like, so for example, let's just say we like the look of this one, we can click on it, we can see the code for the HTML is listed here, including any kind of SVGs. You can see there's all the code for the SVG, masks and so on. Everything is set inside here. Go to the CSS, and again, all the CSS is here as well. So even if you just want to use this to see how things are put together, and then you can go with what you want to do, use it as, like I say, that source of inspiration to start off with, and tweak the code, and just really get stuck in and make it your own. You can do by using these options. Plus, if you are working in light mode or dark mode, you've got a nice simple toggle at the top. So currently in light mode, is it going to work in dark mode? Let's take a look. Nope, looks terrible. So we could tweak it accordingly. But let's say you're working in a very specific color palette. So your background isn't just this plain old sort of dark gray close to black. You've got a very specific color. Well, you can click on the little color chip and you can set that color. So let's say we're working with a hint of bluey purple in our background color. Well, there you go. You can now see what it looks like with that shade set in the background. Pretty cool. Switch it back over to your light mode. You get the idea how this works. You've also got things like save to favorites, which you're probably gonna have to sign up for an account on here to do that. But you've also got copy to Figma, export as various different options like React, View, Svelte, Lit, and so on. You can maximize this, you get rid of all those distractions so you can see what does this look like on its own without any of that stuff just kind of getting in the way and grabbing your attention. The options are there. Let's take a quick look at some of the other things inside you before we wrap this section up. So forms are one of those things that, well, let's be honest about it, they're a little bit boring, but you can do a lot to make them more interesting. Let's go and take a look at the forms option. And as you can see, there's a bunch of different form ideas inside you. So for example, something like this, click on it, take a look, get the code, everything's there for you. So HTML, pretty simplistic, so you could easily transition this over, set your own form up, then tag in the CSS, maybe change the name of some of the classes over, no big drama there, pretty simple and straightforward to do. And again, like I said, you've got all the options here to test this out for yourself. If you're looking for inspiration for background patterns and so on, there's a bunch available here as well. Reference, some are animated, again, you can click, go in, the HTML is there, the CSS is there, everything you need to be able to get this set up on your site. And again, if you want to customize and tweak it, you can do just by modifying that code. Pretty simple. Let's go back to, for example, buttons. And let's say that we are working on a dark design and we only want to see dark based buttons that would work. Well, we can come over to the any theme option, change that over to dark. 
And now we can see just dark variations. We can hover over, see what they look like. Pretty cool. And again, if you want, you can come into this. You can go to get the code. You can set this to use a specific background color. Again, let's use that sort of purpley blue background. And as you can see, that looks pretty nice. Come over, hover over it. You can see that works well. Pretty cool. Switch over to light, looks terrible. But you get the idea how this works. If we go back, there's a couple more things here as well. You can see we can filter things down based upon whether they're created in Tailwind or whether they're just using plain old CSS. We've got those options here as well. And if you want to, you can sort these based upon randomized views, recents, and so on. So there's lots of options inside UIverse to give you inspiration, or you can just take the code and you can use that as the basis of your particular versions of whatever it is you're looking at. Loaders, forms, buttons, you get the idea. Check it out, link in the description. Now, if you're getting value from this video, why not hit that thumbs up button just to let YouTube know that you like it? And if you don't like it, well, hit the thumbs down button twice, as that seems to work pretty well too. Anyway, let's get back on with today's video. Next on our list is UI colors. If you are like lots of people, when it comes to creating colors, you have a bit of a block. Well, this is one way in which you can get this to create those colors, use those colors, the different shades and so on. And you also get a nice visual representation of typical elements on your website, using those colors to give you inspiration on how it could all work. It's a very simple site. You do have a paid option, but I'm not gonna cover that. But if you wanna use it, well, check it out for yourself. It's like $50 per year, and you get access to additional options. So what do we have? First of all, on the left-hand side, we have the color that we're going to use. By default, you see this is pulling this green color. We can switch between different color modes. There's only a couple available here, but there's options should you want to use them. You wanna set your specific color? Well, let's go for that sort of purpley blue color again. Let's say we like the look of that. That looks pretty cool. There we go. So now we have this whole set of shades from a 50 right the way to a 950. Now, if you've ever never used shades when it comes to working with your colors, a typical convention is that you'll have like primary, for example, which would be your primary color, which may be this sort of central color, this 0C11, blah, blah, blah. And then when you have shades that are darker or shades that are lighter, they usually tag on a suffix, which is 50, 100, and so on. So we primary dash 50, primary dash 100, and so on. These just denote whether they're lighter or darker than the main primary color. It's pretty standardized. Now, before we go any further, a quick word from today's video sponsor. Are you looking for a hosting partner that takes speed and security seriously? Then look no further than Kinsta. Their hosting not only delivers lightning fast performance and top tier security, but also provides you with powerful MyKinsta tools. These tools are designed to empower you, making it easy to manage your WordPress site with absolute confidence. And when you need help, they have a WordPress experts available 24-7. No bots, just real answers and real support from people who understand WordPress. It's no wonder they're rated 4.8 stars on G2 with over 740 reviews from satisfied users. This high rating and positive feedback should give you the confidence to trust in their services. Kinsta, the hosting solution that's fast, secure, and always backed by real support. Get started now using the link in the description below. Okay, let's get back on with today's video. So you can see now this shows us some elements underneath of what this would look like with that particular color. So it gives you a better understanding of how that color is going to work. Now let's say you want to add a second color in. Well, you can click and add a second one in. And let's say we want to add in something completely different. Let's go for something like an orange color. That looks pretty good. So now we have those two colors integrated into our overall design. Again, you can see we now have the various different color shades and so on. So this one in the middle, this 500 is our main color that we've chosen. And then everything that goes to the right is darker, to the left is lighter. You can also see then with the UI examples, what this does is it kind of combines those. So if you were using these colors in combination, you can see how well they stack up. And you can also see it's using various different shades. Hover over, it'll tell you exactly which shade it's using. So you can visually see what's being used. And if you like that kind of visual graphical kind of color structure, well, you can see exactly what's being used and then you can replicate that in your own designs. It's pretty nifty. If you wanna add additional colors in, generally gonna to have to upgrade to the pro plan. You can click on it and add it now, but this is only temporary until like March the 18th or whatever that is. So you can see we can add those tertiary colors in. So we now have three colors inside here. 
What does it look like on dark mode? Well, we have the same kind of option here. We can click, see the dark mode variation of it, which in my opinion looks better, but you kind of get the idea how this looks. So if you want to work on a light and a dark mode, do those colors transition over? You can see exactly how it looks and also see specific shades that are being used in any part of the overall design. And then you can use this as the basis of your own designs. Then once you've got everything the way you like it, you can then export it. So if you click on export, this will show you all of those colors set up ready for you. If you're a Tailwind 3 or Tailwind 4 user, then this is basically putting in those Tailwind kind of variations. If you want to use CSS and so on, you are going to have to upgrade to the Pro plan. But like I say, you can easily just grab these colors yourself and just pull those in and use them as they are. There's no real drama. That might take a little bit longer, but the options are there should you want to use them. Contrast Grid, again, is one of those things that is a paid option, but maybe you're working on a specific project, you want to use this, you want those extra features, it's going to cost you $5 for a month. It's not the end of the world, and if it saves you an hour's worth of time, it's paid for itself, no problem at all. So that's basically what you can do with UI colors. It's a nice way of being able to visually see and set up color combinations and see how they look in your design in both light and dark modes. But like I said at the top of this video, these are just two great examples. You can use them for free. And if you want more, well, there's a paid version of this and you kind of get the idea. But let me know in the comment section your thoughts on this. And also, if you've got any recommendations that I should check out for myself, drop those links down below and let me check them out. As always, my name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts, and until next time, take care.